Hi everyone, um, welcome to this week's video. Um, we're going to be talking about a slightly different and more serious topic this week, and it's not one of my usual videos. And the reason being is that in the news, um, something very, very unfortunate and tragic happened. Um, you may have heard that Sarah Everard um, was unfortunately murdered whilst going on a simple walk from her friend's house back to where she lives. And the social media has gone absolutely insane with so many women um, and a few men as well, um, sharing um, stories and ways for um, young girls and women to just stay safe on the streets as well. And as um, young women in our early 20s as well, we wanted to be a voice for everyone, for those who might not find it as easy to speak up about certain incidences and um, situations that they've been in. Um, so I just thought um, that making a video will help start a conversation and maybe plant a seed in people's minds who haven't really thought about being in a position like us before. Before I begin, I thought I'd introduce some of the lovely young women um, that are here today. We have Artie, who's in the top corner, I think, um, Stim Thura as well, and Izzy. Um, Ibera at the bottom, Hi. and Charlotte. Um, Charlotte, doesn't Hello. Have, Charlotte doesn't want to turn her camera on, but we said yeah. to come along anyway because she's got wonderful things to say. Um, yeah. Let's just, you know, let's just get dive straight into it. I think it's not really changed our mindset, but like, it's just brought it more like it. It resonates more now than ever, if that makes sense. Because I yeah. feel like subconsciously we already all knew this. Like every single one of us. When it's so out in the media, I guess it just it just feels very like it makes you think so much more about how careful you have to be. I think it hits home more as well. I don't know if anyone else agree. You just because you we walk mm. at night time. You know, if you want to go to Sainsbury to quickly grab some milk because you've forgotten something, or if you're on a night out, or if you're taking a late train home, like who has been in that situation? Like literally everybody. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to add on to that. It's not just about. Um, you know, this particular situation where you're alone at later in the night, but rather any any part of the day, any situation, whether you're in a crowded space, whether you're alone, it, this has happened to many of us. And one of the shocking stats that has come out of this is that 97% of women in the UK have been harassed in one way or another. Yeah. And it's like, you know, this can't go on when there's this much of a majority. The harassment mm -hmm. isn't something that should be a majority, full stop. The reason this has, like, hit close to home for a lot of us is one that, like, it's it's every girl's worst nightmare, like, yeah. genuinely. And each one of us know that because each one of us have texted each other, text mm -hmm. me when you get home. Mm -hmm. Each one of us have also been on the phone to each other when we're stuff have happened or if we're walking by ourselves like Gaia said to Sainsbury's we're always on the phone to someone mm -hmm. something simple like not wearing headphones at night we're not at the liberty of listening to music at night time but men can be or can, can feel safe to do so mm -hmm. and it just brings all that to like because I guess to some extent a lot of us have just accepted it and we just think you know what fair enough Sarah did all of this stuff that we've been taught to do since such a young age, even though in my opinion, we shouldn't like, you know, it shouldn't be just a one way. She did all of it and yet here she is not alive. And I think that's why it hits home because then what's the point in telling us all these things if we're still not gonna feel safe? Yeah, you know? yeah. I think um, something maybe that might be quite like nice to go through is how many of us, you know, this is sort of, invisible checklist that like the media sort of put Sarah under like how many of us have worn bright clothes I think we've all done it you know yeah. all done it. how many of us have called someone when we've been walking yep yeah texted our location yeah. and avoided going uh, into like dark narrow alleyways and used the main street it's the overwhelming feeling that everyone's realized like hang on why has this been so normalized like why have we been trained as like young girls to do these things to protect ourselves rather than having people actually try to prevent them from happening in the first place why is it seen as our, our fault for doing the wrong things um and like in a way i love that everyone's like coming out and sharing their experiences because like it's been a long time coming, I think. I'm gonna say like, um, in a way like, I don't know if boys necessarily realize 
like how much privilege they have to be able to pop out or walk alone or just do things like on a whim without having to consider every aspect of their safety or even like like second guess what they're wearing you know things like um, you know, if I walk down a certain street am I gonna put my keys between my knuckles yeah, in case yeah. someone comes up you know you hear someone behind you and then when it turns out it's like a woman jogging you're like phew I can relax like it's not yeah. a threat. like things that they never ever have to think about that I don't even know that they've quite realized is what go through our minds on a daily basis so what we're trying mm-hmm. to highlight like this is every day like it's our reality like yeah and that it shouldn't be single, no but. absolutely not and like you know one thing that I just adding on to what you said Izzy is like I always try and plan like if something happened where would be the first shop they would run into or like you know like oh who's that guy in the pizza place that I kind of know that I can go and be oh, like Look, yes. you know it's just weird like that you have the subconscious mm. you create these scenarios just so like you have that fight or flight response ready to just run especially things like you know like late night library sessions that's such a vibe mm. you know you you have your dinner and you go with your coffee yeah. you're ready to go and I feel yeah. like with students loads of people can relate to that um and I think recently like especially my university I think it was last year the year before they created like a not created but they had a night bus which would take you directly to a road near where you live mm. so that you wouldn't have to walk home as well so I think that was a good thing that they did um but it was only mm. later on but it's just like basic things like that like it's almost like it's just you wouldn't choose to do that because you're like oh I don't want to walk home by myself yeah I mean um one of the things I wanted to talk about is um you know my response as a woman and how I respond to certain situations as a woman isn't necessarily taken seriously. Um, And to touch on these library sessions and things, um, there was a particular incident when I was coming back from Senate House Library in in central London. So you can imagine it's so busy and it was only 6 p.m. But because it was November, it was very dark and I was approached by a man and I had earphones in. So my initial reaction was I am about to be mugged. That, that was my initial reaction. And this man proceeded to compliment me on my outfit. And I said, thank you. And I was trying to walk past him. And he said, well, can I get your number then? And my response to this was, oh, I'm really, I'm really flattered. Thank you. But no. But as a woman, why am I saying I'm flattered? I'm not flattered. I'm scared. I'm scared that this man is approaching me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, this situation gets worse because this man is like, you know, no, but I, I'd really like to go out with you. Can I get your number? And I'm saying, oh, I can't because I'm engaged. He has the audacity to say, but where's your ring? Yeah, yeah. Like he, it's like he was really nosy. Like he just, why did he have yeah, to ask you that far? Do you know what I mean? No, yeah, exactly. It, it, that is that is my question too. Why is it that the minute I said no, he couldn't have walked away? Why is it getting to the stage where I have to pretend I am another man's uh, significant other mm. for you to even consider the fact that I can't go out with you? Like, why is no not enough? Like, why do you have to be? It's the fact like, that we have to come up with reasons for our no. Whereas if a guy was to say no, like he'd move on. Like a guy wouldn't give it a second like look or a second question about it. Like if a guy says no, it's no. But yeah. when a girl says no, she has to have a full story behind it as to why. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have yeah. to have a thing to show that I am unavailable. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also another point that I wanted to touch upon was when Abby said this was basically at 6 p.m. And it's that whole idea that it can happen to anyone at any time like and something you know especially because we're so young we like to go clubbing we like to go and party Mm. and and eat food and eat food as well (laughs) yeah we love that um (laughs) but like especially at the clubs I think I've only been alone like I think at it was two times that I decided you know I just want my own space and I kind of just sat alone for literally two minutes Mm. and um the first time that happened a bunch of girls came up to me and asked if I was okay the second time um a really like a full-on creep came to talk to me Mm. and it was just so weird because you think to yourself oh like this shouldn't be normal but I was almost like I wasn't expecting it but it wasn't out of the blue that that happened it was just kind of like oh yeah like I thought this would happen and now I have to go back and talk to my friends and I was literally only alone for two minutes Mm. maximum 
and it's just sad that this has become such a reality for us it's something yeah. from like what yeah. Ethan said like the privilege that like guys don't know that they have it, it's not I think it's quite it's something to put out that's in very important to clarify is that we're not attacking men yeah. or women are and this whole idea of men thinking that we're blaming them we're not all we're asking is this statistically happens to more women mm. because and we're made to feel like this and I think it's very important to make that clear um, but this goes with the um, very archaic saying boys will be boys but now let's change it to boys will be held accountable for their actions mm. finally like can we stop ex excusing boys and their behavior as this is just lad laddish behavior mm. what is that culture that we are now accepting it's one of the things i found quite surprising i guess in the whole like rhetoric of women saying that they like are afraid of all men because it's impossible to know which men might be a a, a danger or not like how can you tell so yes we're naturally weary of any men we come across i i'm honestly so surprised how the natural response of so many men is to go on the defensive and mm -hmm. be like why are you attacking me like i'm not like that why is hashtag not all men trending on twitter like <laughs> like it's it's not about you it's about listening to people telling you that they are constantly afraid and i don't know why they they want to they they care more about defending themselves than listening to the fact that 50% of the population is scared every day and how are they, why are they not more shocked about that like why does that need to defend themselves outweigh the need to yeah. feel shocked no one said you don't no one said men never have, have never faced violence that's not the issue the issue here that women are facing it more regularly <laughs> more daily more severely and it's just it's just more prominent in our lives than it is in an average male's life and I feel like that's yeah. what's not understood it's that like the proportion of the amount of times that the amount of times that we are more likely to be harassed is a lot higher than a man is more likely to be harassed mm. that's the point of this conversation I was gonna say do you know what the other thing that guys I think don't realize is a big thing is text me when you get home mm. at uni yeah. I said if like I had a thing at my house I used to say to all my friends and the girls would do it the girls would do it and the guys wouldn't and the next time I see them they'd be like oh yeah sorry I forgot to text you and I'm like you realize when I say text me when I when you get home I'm genuinely waiting for a text because that's how that's how I am with like that's how I ex what I expect from my friends so I'm like okay maybe it's not a big deal for you but if I was walking back from a party or somewhere alone like I'd be literally texting my exact location all the time nowadays even I get scared to have the phone on me because of the fact that you're going to be mugged and or yeah. someone's going to come up mm. like and I, it's weird because like as soon as I leave the hospital and I, I'm walking back home like if it's, if it's quite late at night I like put in my headphones but then there's the fear of oh my gosh I've got my headphones in now so I do this really like you know it's sad almost thing where I just keep one earbud in and leave the other one yeah. out because I'm like okay, at least I can hear out and then I've got this one so I can talk to whoever or, you know, at least enjoy some music on the way back. It, it's, it makes me sad because I, I, I've i like accepted it. One thing that I didn't notice I did, but a friend of mine noticed is that whenever I walk outside, I always keep my head fixated, like my eyes fixated on the ground. So my head is lowered. And I realize I do this because I don't want to draw attention to myself. Um, you know, I don't want to be a target. I don't want to accidentally make eye contact with someone uh, in order for them to feel as though they can approach me or uh, feel as though, you know, I'm this walking target. And um, I don't know if you guys have done this. I don't know if this is- Just, just to interrupt you, that I actually do the opposite. So I literally stare straight ahead. So I look angry <laughs> when I walk. <laughs> my hair isn't even out. My hair's in a bun. And like, mm. just to touch upon clothing as well, like, especially if I'm walking to a friend's place, I literally zip everything up from head to toe. I try to look as ugly as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Like once I even wore a hat and my hair was in a bun, like I just, I looked awful, but that was my safe way of walking out and about, especially if it's at night time as well, like, you know, when it gets dark, because I think that the uglier I look, the less approachable I am. Whereas I find that like, you know, Abby, you said that you look at the floor, but for me, I'm like, I can't see my vision. I don't know who's behind me, who's in front of me, um, stuff like that. So, you know, but I have actually seen people do different things. Cause then there's also like you mentioned, like, if I'm looking at looking up at someone, then maybe they'll come and approach me. So 
it's it's a, it's a lose lose game, I think. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I'm like, laughing about way, it because I don't know how to approach you. They're gonna approach you. Well, I was gonna say, like for example, when I was little, I was by the age of like twelve or something. I was so tall. I was taller than most of the boys in my class. Mm. Um, well, I mean in primary school at least. You're taller than um, us. You're taller than us. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, the thing is, when I was young, my mum would always say that she's so happy that I'm tall because when I go to school or like when I walk home late at night, I look more like a boy because of my height. Mm. And, you know, when you're so young, you don't really fully understand that. But as I've gotten older, you know, sometimes I'll be walking home like Gaia, you know, I'll have my hood up and trying to look more like a man. Yeah. And doing that, I know I feel safer, even though, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. Like there will ultimately still be cases where a guy will come up to you and stuff, but it's just like something that you do for yourself. It like, it does make you feel more secure and more safe, mm -hmm. which is just crazy to me. I saw the image that was released uh, on BBC News. Um, and I was like, she literally dresses like me when I'm mm -hmm. like trying to look as bright and as ugly as possible and I'm not trying to look coordinated when I'm going to places. I'm like, that means that I'm also a target. Do you know what I mean? Girl. You know how you were saying that you like, you know, if you dress like really bad and if you look really uncoordinated, you're less likely to get approached. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretense. That's a whole pretense because we've been taught. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if that's you dress crazy. boldly, you'll get approached. We've been taught, dress boldly, you'll get approached. And therefore our minds are like, oh, so if we don't dress boldly, we won't. But that's not true. You will get approached by anyone. That's the thing. Regardless that of how you thing. dress. And I feel like yeah. there's yeah, this whole right. idea that mm -hmm. if you dress boldly or if you like dress like, you know, like promiscuously or whatever, that you'll get approached. And it's not true because you'll get approached no matter what you do. It's a bit off topic, but like rape cases, kids get raped. What are kids doing in school uniform? forms that promiscuous nothing yeah. it's the clothing thing is like a it's being created by men that want mm -hmm. to control how women dress and yeah. so therefore like they're like don't dress like that you'll get attacked yeah. and then it creates the idea if you don't dress like that you won't but that's not true and I think that's the mindset because we've all grown up in it I think that's the mindset I subconsciously have and yeah. I know that in a world of today women should be able to wear whatever they like but me trying to protect myself I try and literally look as rubbish as possible because mm -hmm. that's my safety mechanism people are as you're like not all men not all men and I'm like we're not talking about all men yeah. am I talking about the vast majority yes because the men that are bystanders also are included in this men category. Mm -hmm. Just because you haven't done it or yeah. you aren't directly doing it, if your best friend's doing it, if one of your boys are doing it, if someone you know is doing it or you see someone doing it, if you're a bystander, you are part of that men. I don't care if you say you haven't don't done be it. Scared. I think for those who are bystanders, you just, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be scared to speak up. You don't need to say it there and then. You can take them aside and be like, yo, what you said to that girl was not cool. Like, if they if they decide to cut your friendship there and then that's a good thing because you're going to be in a better place away from those people but it's about if you if you pick up this situation that someone isn't treating another girl right then you just have to voice it because otherwise you never know what's going to happen so many guys think like if they're not acted like because they're not actively a rapist or actively a murderer then that means that they're on the other side of the argument like they might call themselves a feminist they might say of course I support all the women in my life and my sister and my mum and my mm -hmm. girlfriend or whatever but like bro where are you then when this happens and there's just silence like it's not enough to not be actively a terrible person like you need to call out other people on their behavior and support yeah. people because you want equality and like when women have been historically more silenced, like to get that equality, like you need the mm. men to participate in course, the conversation yeah. and not just sit to the side and be like, this isn't a problem for me. I'm not the bad person they're talking about. So whatever, it doesn't matter. I've walked down at 10 a.m. once trying to ca catch the train and someone's been like, hey, um, my friend wants to speak to you. Yeah. And I'm like, it's 10 a.m. Can you just not wait? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. Not like even what? Even why did your friend need to speak to me? Exactly. Yeah, well, just woke up, you know? And <laughs> Go back to bed. Even, even worse, I've walked down the road and men have beeped. And it's like, oh, yeah. are you serious? Hate. Are you serious, you know? So being an active bystander is, if, if you know deep down that what your friend is doing is wrong, and by the way, it's wrong, there is no grey area here, mm -hmm. you tell them. It's not about 
making them it's not about like a confrontation it's about having a conversation and I think people need to get that clear in their head we're not trying to you know start another war or something between men and women yeah. we just want more people to open up about it and talk about it because that you know education and talking about people is how you can advance on these things okay yeah, yeah. and I think that's really important like and a part of active bystanding that if for example you see a guy following a woman and you've seen it and you're the guy go and tell her or go and stand next to her or go and stand between these people it, it's some of these things that I've seen like being shared yeah, if you're yeah. seeing a guy confronting a woman and you can see she's uncomfortable just go up to her and all you need to do is ask are you okay simple thing yeah and you know or yeah. stand with her and be like do you want me to walk home especially if, we, if you know we all have guy friends yeah. if a guy you know if one of you guys see your girlfriends have to walk home by themselves just ask hey do you want me to walk home it's going to take you you know five or ten minutes out of your time maximum yeah you know if you think it's okay for your friend to call out a girl or treat her rude and like you know harass her and you won't do anything about it because he's your boy get your priorities sorted like it's just as simple as that your your boy does not get to treat anyone rudely just because your boys it doesn't give him a free pass and it doesn't give you a free pass you know I, I'm, not, I'm not I don't try to be a cynic, cynical person but I always feel like these sort of things happen and then they die down and people forget about it and yeah, I, yeah. That's yeah. I actually wanted mm. to like raise I guess in this call which is that like I've had someone um say to me earlier like this has been a narrative that's lasted like 50 years um, I mean yeah. back like the 1970s women had reclaimed the night marches and people are still talking about having one like this Saturday like 45 years on um, and they said like well if nothing's changed in 45 years how can you expect anything to change now like that's just how life is in a way um, and I was like basically just interested to hear how you guys think things might actually progress yeah. You know, I always feel like this happens in social media where there's a sort of like uproar and then people stop. But I'd like to think that in the scenario like this, at least because we're in a society, a lot more people are open. And like you said yeah. earlier, it's something that has to also come from men as well. It can't just be women. I'd like to think that at least we could have we sort of reached out to a, at least a small percentage of men who actually understand what we go through then unfortunately then from then it kind of goes on to the conversations they have and that's why I think it's so important like like you said if you're boys especially because you know it's very easy to have these conversations I, I think in a, in a positive way I'd hope that more people are aware and hopefully we can feel safe but I think as Gaia said once before is it still going to stop me calling me or texting my friends text me when you get home no because I don't think I will get to that stage yeah I think I think it's it's it'll take some time because you know when you meet people in the street it's you don't know who's who's nice and who's not nice you can only gauge as from human nature what you are wearing what their um, behavior is how their personal space is like as well so although we shouldn't judge someone by what they're wearing or how they behave that's the only way that we can like just survive on the streets yeah. because you don't know what is coming at you as well it's um, better to be safe than sorry you know I think yeah. Yeah. and in our cases you know we've seen the extreme unfortunately this week and we've yeah. seen what can happen and none of us are going to take that chance and there yeah. are times when this... I felt bad for like brushing someone off that like might actually have needed help but like yeah it's yeah. just like yeah. an instinctive reaction to be like yeah. no 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 like leave me alone I'm carrying on walking like and if if someone like maybe it's quite a London thing as well, like in a city, but like if someone comes up to you for any reason, you're just like, "What yeah. do you want with me? I'm about to be kidnapped!" Like, yeah. Yeah. Instantly, like worst case scenario, like looking around. Okay, are there other people here? Like, you can and wait that shouldn't it. be people's instinctive reaction. Like, we should want to be nice. We should want to help other people out mm -hmm. and not be like, "What do they want with me?" But that's not yeah. what happens, yeah. which sucks, yeah. basically. I was gonna go back to Guy's point. You know how she was saying like we shouldn't like you know judge people on what they're wearing, but like we try and pick out and see who's like who's less likely to hurt us. But that being said, sometimes even the well-dressed people end up being the creepiest people. Like 
this is why when we say when we're talking about men we have to kind of we generalize in the sense that we cannot we don't have like a radar that tells us he's okay he is a nice guy he is a creep he will try to hurt you but because we have to be so protective of ourselves we instantly think the worst and so regardless of whether you're dressed really badly and like you are giving off some kind of creepy vibes or if you're well dressed in a suit and approaching me in like middle of London and you look hella fancy mm. my first thought is going to be shit I'm going to be in trouble because our initial reaction to any man is we're going to get hurt well it's an interesting point I guess that you raise like you can't judge from what anyone looks like yeah it might be but I think mm. like the most important thing to think about is the fact that like these like stranger like level like sexual assault sexual harassment are actually like the smallest percentage like most often it's someone yeah. you know so yeah even like we're saying yeah we feel suspicious of people in the street but that's and stranger danger has been hammered home but that's like such a minority it's normally yeah. someone mm-hmm. you trust like it will be your male friend or yeah. you know like someone someone that you've spent time with that you're familiar with which yeah. is why it's such a scary situation like like, exactly and I, I I just want to touch on that because when it's someone that you know uh, and when you do try and speak up about it then it becomes a whole thing of oh no but he's nice oh, no, but he's yeah. nice. he would never do that exactly or he didn't mean it it was a joke don't be so sensitive don't be hysterical about it you know what he's like but it's but it's not like just because we have a friendship or we have some sort of relationship it doesn't make it excusable what you have done has made me feel uncomfortable please be held accountable for it and take responsibility so that other people don't see this as a situation that can be repeated and then you know the cycle continues yeah i think something that kind of leads on from your point is with sarah's case um i don't know what i don't know if guys like what we just saw that the policeman who was held has been like uh, prisoned for the kidnap and murder of her and it goes back to saying that like a policeman who's supposed whose job is to keep us safe I was just about to talk about this and I mean I can only imagine how she would have felt in that situation where a policeman who could have had his ID if if some if like, someone comes up to you hi I'm a policeman shows you his ID and says you've got to come with me no one is going to speak up to a policeman and say, no, sorry, I won't. No one's going to do that. Is there a person of authority? You have faith exactly. in them. They're and there to protect your community. Exactly. It and must be for a reason. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what's so upsetting as well, because now it's like we've got that additional boundary of even people who are meant to protect us, such as policemen, will I feel now comfortable now going up to someone or if one of them called me over... To, I don't know for some for whatever reason would I feel comfortable or would I have to get my keys ready in case he does something yeah literally I think I think it's because you just lose lose faith in them and yeah. the trust in them's completely gone um and I was just even thinking earlier if just even basic it doesn't have to be police like you know like delivery drivers or you know like people um like a like a bus driver or, or even like the ticket collector you just you just don't know people in uniform you just can't trust you I don't know you lose yeah. that faith in them I'm gonna say this one point which is sometimes when I tell my male friends like oh yeah I do feel scared when I'm walking about alone in the street um they sometimes say okay well why don't you go home earlier mm. and like I, I understand that sentiment and of course like I will make an effort to do that but also like as a woman, like I want to feel liberated and I want to have the freedom to go out to Sainsbury's at 7 p.m. Yeah. 7 p.m. <laughs> and you know, it's like we're in the 21st century. Like I I want to be like, you know, feel equal yeah. to a man, you know, and I feel like that's not a big ask. And you know, saying like, okay, well, why don't you go home earlier? It's not really an argument it's like well so so in that sense then I should have a 10 p.m curfew or in winter I should be home by 6 p.m because it gets dark then it's just not it it doesn't make sense it doesn't really translate you know I will still go out and I will still live my life Mm. despite all of this but this is why it's so important to have these conversations I think we've really poured our hearts out um this evening 
um, just to carry the message that we don't want to really live like this anymore. <laughs> We don't want other girls, other women to suffer. And we just want to open a conversation. Like I said before, earlier on, like just plant a seed um, in people's minds and get them to like put themselves in our shoes because walking to and from places is like an everyday um, activity. You can't like get rid of it. You can't just not walk to places and, um, you know, stay at home just to protect yourself. We still have to live our life as Charlotte Riley said. Um, so like, first of all, thank you guys for agreeing to just talk about this because it's so, so important. Obviously with Sarah Everard's situation, I can't imagine what she went through. I can't even imagine how her family must be feeling. And it's literally had like an earthquake effect to this whole society. For those of you watching, just the point of it is we just want to spread the word and the, for the future generation, for the gu young girls who are, you know, little like young children who are going to be grown women in a few years time. We don't want this society to be um, scary for them. Right. We want them to grow up in a safe environment. Um, and I think if we teach each other what we can do, and what we shouldn't do, that's the only way that um, our society is going to change. So I hope that in our different languages and voices and anger and laughter today that we've kind of experienced that and expressed that. Um, and if you have any worries or any concerns, um, we will link some relevant websites and um, articles for you guys to read. Or also um, you can message me um, as well if you have anything. But most importantly, if you can just share this video, that's all I want. I want people to get this message across because there might be another Sarah Everard. We don't want that to happen. So that's the key message.